Okay, so I got a comment from someone who purchased my practice tests. Thank you, by the way. They wanted me to show them how to do questions 28 and 13 because they were probability questions. So I said, okay, no problem, I'll help you out. So I'm gonna do that in this video. Anybody else who's purchased the practice test can follow along as well. Um, and let's go ahead and get started. So question number 28 says, Jasmine has four coins worth 10 cents each and five coins worth five cents each. If she chooses two of these coins at random, what is the probability that the two coins combined will be worth at least 20 cents? Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a picture four coins worth 10 cents each. One, two, three, four, and they're all 10 cents, so that's four dimes. And then five coins worth five cents each, so I'm gonna one, two, three, four, five, and they're all gonna be five cents each. If she chooses two of these coins at random, what is the probability that the two coins combined will be worth at least 20 cents? So she's gonna end up having two picks. The first pick, in order to get at least 20 cents, the first pick has to be a dime worth 10 cents. And then her second pick also has to be a dime worth 10 cents. Because if she were to pick a dime and then a nickel, it would only be 15 cents. If she were to pick two nickels, it would only add to be 10 cents. So to make at least 20 cents, her first pick has to be a dime and her second pick has to be a dime. So let's go ahead and see how we would get fractions to represent these. So for the first pick, what is the probability of her picking a dime? So there's four dimes, one, two, three, four. So four would be the top number out of a total of four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So four out of nine, four is the chances of her getting a dime. There's four dimes and nine is the total amount of coins, okay? Then we're gonna multiply that, and we have to talk about her second pick. Now remember, when she picks a dime, she takes it out of the batch and she's holding it in her hand. So now for her second pick, one of those dimes is not an option to choose. So now on her second pick, what is the probability of her getting a dime? Well, now there's only three dimes, one, two, three. So the three is on the top. And now since she has one dime in her hand, there's gonna be a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's gonna be a total of eight coins to choose from. So we're gonna go ahead and now multiply these two fractions together. We're gonna do four times three on the top and nine times eight on the bottom. Four times three is 12, nine times eight is 72. And then we're just gonna make sure that we reduce the top and the bottom can be divided by 12. Top and bottom can be divided by 12. 12 divided by 12 is one. And then 72 divided by 12 is six. So the answer is going to be one six. So our answer is going to be A. So I hope that helped you if you're studying and you're following along with the practice test. Just remember in real life scenario, if someone has to get at least something Say to yourself, well, what does this person have to choose? If I need to get at least 15 cents, then I can get two dimes. I can get a dime and a nickel. If I need to get at least 10 cents, that means I can have a nickel and a nickel. So just ask yourself, what is it that this person has to get or has to choose? And then find the probability of it choosing one time and then the probability of it happening again. All right, so well done with that. Since you guys are looking at question number 29, how about let's just throw that one in as extra? Okay, so I'm just gonna erase this to help us to be able to focus. So 29 says, in the xy plane, what is the y-intercept of the graph of the equation y is equal to two x minus five times x plus three? So if you remember, y-intercepts are always xy points, but the x is always zero. So it will be 0, 2, or 0, 5, or 0, 0. So the x is always 0. So if you're given an equation, y is equal to 2, x minus 5, x plus 3, if you want to figure out what the y is equal to, just plug in 0 for x. So 0 minus 5 and 0 plus 3. So 0 minus 5 is negative 5. 
and 0 plus 3 is 3. And then we're going to go ahead and multiply. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Negative 10 times 3 is negative 30. So y is going to be equal to negative 30. So our answer is going to be a. So in terms of a point, a y can be negative. The y-intercept can be 0, comma, negative 30. And in this case, that's what it would be. So if you're ever asked on your um, AccuPlacer or your TSI test to find the y-intercept, just plug in 0 into the equation for x, and you'll be able to figure out what y is equal to. All right, and then you asked for 13 as well. So let's go ahead and do 13. Okay, so it's a dot plot. And I was doing my best to create this on Google. So let's just pretend the dots go all the way up. And you can do this as well. Technically, you don't have to because you're still able to read the graph without it. But let's just go ahead and put them in. It says the dot plot below shows the number of children and 15 families in the neighborhood. What fraction of families have less than four kids? Okay, so when you are looking at a dot plot, each one of the dots represents families. So because there's 15 families in the neighborhood, you should have 15 total dots. So the way that you read this is that if a family, for example, has two kids, you would look at the number two for kids and you would put a dot. And if you interviewed another family and they had two kids, you'd put another dot. So let's erase those dots. So how many families have less than four kids? So if you had three kids, you have less than four kids. Two kids, less than four. One kid, less than four. And if you have zero children, you're less than four. So there are three families that have three children. There are two families that have two children. Two families that have one child. And three families that have zero children. So let's count how many families that is. Three plus two is five. Five plus two is seven. Seven plus three is ten. So 10 out of the 15 families have less than four children in their family. But again, oftentimes when you have fractions, especially on a test, they want you to reduce. So let's go ahead and reduce this. You reduce this fraction by dividing the top and the bottom number by the largest number that goes into both. So the largest number that goes into 10 and 15 is five. So 10 divided by five is two, and 15 divided by five is three. So two out of the three families would have less than four children. So the answer would be C. And don't forget at the bottom of this practice test, there are uh, there is an answer key. So you can go ahead and check that you have the right answers. So anybody who has a practice test, if you're going through it, please, you can always either send me an email or you can comment below a video and just tag me and say, Miss Amber, I'm struggling with this problem. Can you help me out? And maybe I can help you out with a video as well. And for those of you who are taking the TSI test and you want some extra practice problems, I will link the test in the description box below. But I really hope that studying is going well for you guys. I hope that you guys are doing your best with the original practice test and with my practice test. And I hope you guys get lots of passing scores. I hope you have a great rest of your evening and I'll see you in the next one.